Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and a while back I did a video on the Corsair A115, an air tower cooler which is able to have two fans installed on it, two 140mm fans, and I wanted to show how you could use this to potentially cool a Core i9-13900K. So in that video I went about setting up the cooler and then demonstrating it in the build that I had with the Leon Lee Evo RGB. While doing that though, I discovered that the RGB RAM, so the Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM I had in there, was a little bit too tall, which meant that the second additional fan sat a little bit high on the air tower. Now in theory, not necessarily a problem, because it just sticks up a little bit, as you can see from these shots, but not ideal in terms of aesthetics, and not perfect, but not to be one defeated by such things, I went about installing it in the case anyway. Now. I also found that you could install it on the other side, but the VRM was also a problem. And then when I went to put the door back on the case, I discovered that the glass then pressed against the fan so the case wouldn't close properly. So not ideal. So not to be discouraged by that, I decided that the best thing to do was in fact to just take the additional fan out, whip that out, and then test and see whether the air tower could still manage to cool with just one fan the pretty hot i9-13900K. Now I've done a video separately, obviously I've gone into a lot more depth on this and I'll link to that in the description. But I went through some stress testing with Cinebench and with Intel's XTU, so the Extreme Tuning Utility. I basically went in there, I ran some stress tests and I found that essentially the CPU wasn't thermal throttling. It didn't seem to get too hot under testing. It was doing well under load, which really surprised me for an air tower in the fact that it was outperforming a 240mm all-in-one cooler that I'd used previously for similar testing, and yet it only had one fan on it, so pretty impressive. Now, it was then pointed out to me that this was stupid and I was doing it wrong, and I should have done a better job. I knew when I was making the video that really what I should have done is I should have used lower profile RAM. Using RGB RAM makes no sense, so perhaps I should have done it properly in the first place. So of course I was kind enough to send over some other RAM. So I then went about the process of repositioning that fan, putting the bracketing back on it, which I want to note is really easy. So in the original video I showed how you can put it on either side and then you can choose where to put your fan. But it has some clever bracketing on it which then slots into place. And if you've got the right size RAM then it should be fine. So I then took out the RGB Vengeance RAM, removed it from the system, and then went about slotting in the other DDR5 RAM, which is basically a bog standard Vengeance DDR5. And it's worth noting that this isn't as fancy, but you will see that there is a slight difference in the height because there's no RGB interface on it. It's a little bit smaller. Now, unfortunately, the Specs aren't as good on this RAM, we're losing a few mega transfers per second and also the timings aren't as good as the RGB versions. So that's proof, if nothing else, that RGB is good for your system. <laughs> and then I went about basically installing this new RAM in the hope that it would solve the issue. Now it's worth noting as well that it is hard at this point to get low profile DDR5 RAM and this isn't particularly low profile, so it's not super low profile. And what I discovered is when I went to put the fan back on, the additional fan, it still sits a little bit higher than the air tower itself. Now this is noticeably lower than it was the time before, but it's still a little bit higher, so not ideal. So just for some variety, I took some pretty bog standard crucial DDR5 RAM I have, which doesn't have any heat shielding on it and is basically just the RAM sticks itself. There's nothing fancy about this, so that's even lower potentially, or as low as it possibly could be here anyway. And then I reinstalled the fan and I still found that it was sitting a little bit high. Now I wanna note that this isn't a problem necessarily with Corsair's air tower. You'll probably find the same issue with other air towers as well, especially with large 140 mil fans. And it might also not be an issue for everyone because if you've got a really deep case, then you might not be a problem. In that original video, this is what I wanted to show, the, the things you need to think about when buying an air tower and when installing it. Is it gonna be an issue in your case? Are you gonna be able to fit it? Will it be able to sufficiently cool your CPU? And the other things to think about. And so now I've got it set up in the proper way. Uh, unfortunately, still doesn't look 
completely perfectly aesthetics wise because it's still sticking out a little bit over the top of the air tower itself but this time the glass will shut so the case will close. So now what I'm going to do is show some thermal tests on how the performance goes if you actually do it properly rather than I did the first time around with a single fan. And hopefully this has shown the level of effort that I put into my videos. So if you like that sort of thing, subscribe for more of it. And now stick around to see what the tests are like. So since we've now got two fans at our disposal, I thought I'd use Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility with Intel Speed Optimizer to just give a quick automatic overclock to the CPU. Obviously this isn't loads of tweaking, but I wanted to see if we could lift the performance of the CPU while also still handling the temperatures pretty well. And this is a quick and easy way to do it. Then I used Extreme Tuning Utility's stress test, so CPU stress test for five minutes, which is the same sort of test I ran before, because I wanted to see if at any point it thermal throttled, because that's obviously a big indicator of any issues. And I'm happy to report that as it ran through that test, there were no thermal throttle issues throughout the test. And it then came out of that with a clean report. So even with a little bit of overclocking applied, he was still passing the test with not much of an issue. You can see obviously the temperature did get hot, but it didn't get hot enough to cause any problems. So then I went to run Cinebench, the latest release, so Cinebench 24, and I ran the multi-core test on this, so you can see a look at that. Now you will notice with hardware monitor on the right-hand side that one of the cores did up, get up to 100 degrees at one point, and a lot of them are in the 90 degree range. So that's to be expected with the 99, and especially if you consider it's been overclocked a little bit, only a small amount. And then we only got one core that's actually showing up red. So from my experience, it's actually pretty good still. And so this test is now showing that with two fans and some overclocking, you can indeed get good performance out of an air tower. So perhaps this is the way I should have done the video in the first place to show you the different ways that you could do it and the things to think about. Hopefully I've given you some interesting insights into the cooler and how I work and the things to think about before you buy an air tower or any other setup for your machine and what they're capable of. One final consideration obviously is the system noise performance. Now this is a bit difficult because obviously it's going to vary from machine to machine. I've got, as you can see, quite a lot of fans in this case. They only use TL120 and LCD fans. You've got six intake and then four exhaust fans plus the 240mm fans on the radiator. What I did find is that while doing the thermal testing, it did get pretty loud in the room. Now, this is to be expected with this amount of fans and also putting the CPU under maximum load, essentially, is going to do that, but general day-to-day -day use hasn't been too bad. But you can see I'm getting around 57 decibels, somewhere in that region. So it was pretty noisy, but your experience may vary depending on your room and your case and the airflow. So something to consider. Anyway, hopefully this has been a useful video. If it has, subscribe and come back for more. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.